Okay, so I did a video about this bead roller a couple days ago and I've decided I'm going to make a, a bottom frame for it. I'm going to probably make it something about the same size so when I park the, uh, these things I can nest them together. So I found that uh, it's actually quite unstable tilting it backwards and forwards. So I'm going to come out uh, wider in that direction. And it's fairly stable in this direction currently, but I'm going to make it wider, assuming that at some point there's going to be a, uh, a motor attached to it, and we'll assume that it's 20 inches wide and kind of go with that. And that'll give me something uh, on this side so that when the, I'm resting parts on it, that it uh, doesn't tip. Not that a piece of sheet metal parts is going to be too heavy, but I want to be safe. One dude there said that the cast could break. I don't know if that's really true or not, but uh, in this case it's not going to cost me any money to make it a bit wider, so I'll listen to his advice. So I picked up some casters for this thing. Not the strongest ones in the world. I got one, I think I got four of them with brakes. It's like an extra 50 cents or something. And uh, I've got a stock of uh, angle iron here, so I just slide out it. Of course, I probably should have separated the uh, tape off of it. But anyway, I'm going to cut off four pieces of this to uh, make what I need to make. So uh, I guess I'll pop in with a couple video clips on the way through. There's no need for you to see me make this thing. For tools, I'm going to use a grinder, I guess, to cut the uh, angle iron. I'm going to use this little contraption here. I've had this for quite a while. I need to find a way of attaching this on here. Kind of broke off, but it's uh, relatively safe. Might mount an electrical box on there one day with just a light switch. So anyway, I set up the uh, speed in here for as slow as we can go, which is 620. And I'll use uh, something a bit over a half an inch for uh, a drill bit. We'll whip this thing together. Plan for the night anyway. Alright, so we got to get ready to cut the steel. I'm going to cut two uh, pieces that are 20 inches long. If you can see it or not, but I marked it with a uh, steel marker here from Silver Streak. So use that along with just a, a square. So I got some pretty cheap blades, and if you've seen my other videos, doesn't always go very well, so uh, hopefully I don't kill myself. So just have to dress that up. So that went pretty good. Not a perfect cut, but uh, it's adequate for what I'm doing currently. So you always be careful when you put this thing down. You don't want to sit on it and have it turn on. So you should probably just unplug it when you're done with it. I shouldn't drop your light bulbs on the floor. That's your LED. I guess I don't mind. So uh, I'll cut a few more of these things off and we'll follow up again. 
All right, so the cutting went well. I got two 16-inch uh, pieces. Let's point my feet going this way. Then the uh, longer pieces are uh, 28 inches paces long. So that works out to one uh, length of angle iron, whatever that is. It's probably eight feet or six feet. Haven't really done the math. So if I had transfer punches right now, I would punch the four holes from the uh, bottom plate into the angle iron. This is a bit light duty angle iron. Hopefully it's not going to bend on me. I tried to make the uh, extensions reasonably long without being too long. So I'm going to put holes here. I'll have to do another set of holes at the end of the uh, cross pieces and then in the corners for the casters. So I guess that'll be however many holes. So as uh, I progress I'll show you some more. Alright so uh, did some uh, quarter in or eighth inch pilot holes. Now I'm doing nine sixteenths holes for the uh, final fasteners. This uh, machine has an issue when you're running uh, the nine sixteenths. I don't know if there's oil on it or not. So I use uh, fluid film for lots of different things. The only problem with fluid film is it must have water in it because it freezes. So uh, kind of just getting by here. It's a wooden machine, so but hey, we can get the job done. Two oil cans trying to alternate between. better in the shop. It's got fluorescent lights that don't all work because it's cold. So I'm trying to figure out a reasonable solution for that because I'm renting. I don't want to spend a bunch of money on that if uh, not necessary. Um, yeah, so I have a few more holes i got to drill if I can keep enough cutting fluid floating around. And then I'll get back to you later. Alright, so we're getting a little bit closer. we got uh, four more holes to drill. Then I'll have the uh, frame built. I just have to stick the casters on after that. So uh, it dawned on me I can get some oil off the dipstick on my car to finish doing the drilling. As long as I don't uh, cross contaminate it getting metal filings into the engine. I guess that'll have to work. Because I feel guilty ruining that bit. It's fairly expensive. And it should last me a very long time. So anyway, keep plugging away at it. Alright, so one thing I forgot about this... Uh, Joe Press I truly hate is that the uh, chuck falls off the taper fairly often and uh, there's a bit of run out in that chuck so it's not great but anyway the job is done so when you're looking at buying a drill press the taper is good you can change it to different things like you can get a, uh, a threading device to put on a tap and then it doesn't over torque the tap and then you can automatically reverse it when you pull out. So there's some pretty cool attachments you can use if your uh, drill press is big enough, tall enough, and has the power for it. But now uh, I've got that done. So the, 
I also wanted to mention, I'm not sure if you're supposed to use gloves when you're using a drill press. It's been a while since I've went through the safety rules on that. So I'll keep that in mind. I know with rotating equipment like, rotating equipment like a lathe, you definitely don't want to because you will get entangled and horrible things will happen. So we're just about ready to put the, uh, the wheels on. I'm just going to square things up. I suspect it's three quarter wrench. Let's bear with me for a second. If you watch my videos, you'll notice I probably don't edit very much out. It's not really my style. So if I goof something up, you're stuck watching it. Oh, it's set's kind of messed up. Where's the three-quarter hiding? <laughs> I think they skipped the deep three-quarter socket in here for some reason. I guess if you had an air wrench, you could pick that up a bit easier. You wouldn't have to horse around like this. some wheels on it. Of course when the uh, drill bit chock falls off there, it leaves a burr in the hole and you can't start very well after that. So what I was doing was uh, just clearing it up with the rat tail file afterwards. So hopefully this thing is going to be strong enough. It's going to get a little bit tricky probably. But I figured I was going to do that.
That looks like it's coming together pretty good. Not very strong, no, I don't know. We should find out later. I guess if it starts spinning, you can see there's a uh, big hex you can put something on to hold that. Alright, so I'm going to turn this off and tighten the wheels up here. And then we will return for the final reveal. Alright, so that's the finished product. Sorry, every time I turn on my camera, I think I've got it the frame set properly. Then it switches to 16 by 9 and cuts off the top and the bottom. One of these days I will smarten up and I will realize that that's going to happen. So, uh, I got the wheels on. I got the brakes on on the front right now. I got four brakes so I can turn it however I want. One thing that's dawned on me is that I'm going to need a motor because this is 20 inches wide. If you're cranking this thing, you're not going to be able to even see the line, let alone have any good control over it. So the, uh, the motor is going to have to happen. It uh, seems stable enough. It's not going to fall over. If you want to lift it, like you got to physically try. If you had a smaller model and you were going to leave it as a hand crank, you probably want to get the height set up so that when you're standing your arm can go straight down without having to crouch or do anything weird as you're going around. I locked out and it's the right height. So if it was a two person operation I could comfortably crank this thing. Turn off the brakes. I can move it around. Hopefully you can see that. Anyway, I think I'm pretty happy with that. Just check the time so I figure out how much effort it took. So it's 9.30 at night now. It took me about an hour and a half to do that. Just get a box of uh, inch and a half bolts that are about uh, half inch diameter. Some flat washers, some casters. Everything here is bolted on. You could weld it up if you wanted to. And uh, a section of angle iron. And you're going to have a, a mobile bead roller. So, hey, that's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with that. Good task for one evening there. So, I guess that's uh, about it. It's time to head home, pack it in for the evening. So, thank you for watching.